One of the ironies of DirectX 11 is that um, the GPUs, we couldn't access them as fast as we wanted to because of the CPU bottlenecks. But now with DirectX 12, that's gone away. So we can access the GPUs so fast now. It's really important for us to make VR games, for example. We need to access as much of that power as we can. So the three most important features of DirectX 12 for us are async compute, multi-threading, and multi-GPU support. So uh, one of the advantages of DirectX 12 is uh, it enables asynchronous compute. This allows us to take systems such as our particle system and run the simulation and sorting tasks in parallel on the GPU with the main rendering pipeline. So these parallel tasks soak up spare GPU cycles. It allows us to extract the maximum performance from the hardware. In Total or Warhammer, we have several parts of our pipeline running in compute shaders. A few examples are particle simulation, screen space ambient occlusion, directional light. All these compute shader parts are running as async compute in parallel with all the geometry rendering like shadow map, gbuffer pass, uh, UI. All these building blocks can run parallel with each other. The great thing with DirectX 12 is that with asynchronous compute we can now use much more of the GPU processing power. So effectively we can do what we've been doing on consoles for some time. So now uh, with DirectX 12 we can finally uh, break up the long serial process of submitting all our draw calls and state changes into parallel tasks. This enables better utilisation of CPU cores. also allows you to have more draw calls per frame. When we make our games, we actually have a, a multi-threaded job system. So we can, uh, for example, do animation of physics in parallel across several cores. But now we can multi-thread the graphics, so we can start to feed the GPUs more efficiently. DirectX 12 gives, uh, now gives explicit control over multiple GPUs. Creating uh, efficient AFR rendering on uh, previous versions of DirectX was always a fiddly process, uh, because the driver hid a lot of details from you. Now it's all explicit, that makes that process far easier. One of the important things when you're making uh, video games is to have as much control as you can. In the past we've not had control over the multiple GPUs, now we can. We can explicitly say what we want, or we can send as much data as we, as we want to whichever GPU we want. We can arrange things the way that we want to, to make best use of the GPUs to get the fastest game that we can. I think overall the uh, most exciting thing about DirectX 12 is the flexibility it gives developers in terms of how they interact with the GPU. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, impact that has on PC gaming. The great challenge with VR is in fact the high resolutions, high frame rates and very low latency that we need. So you're effectively doing 90 hertz, you're doing two high resolution screens and you need to do that very, very quickly. Well, we're looking at a range of strategies. I mean, the obvious one is, you know, this alternate frame rendering, but that has problems with latency. Another one is to render, for example, uh, one GPU per eye, or in fact, multiple GPUs per eye. Another approach is to render different parts of the screen with each GPU. It's an interesting to see what will work out as the best process for each different opportunity that we have. VR is going to be the future for games. One of the most important things that we can do over the next few years is to make sure that we get it right and we need DirectX 12 to do that on PC.